Hello friends, today we are reviewing the Wacom 1S 2022 edition. Now that its successor is out, it's had its price slashed from $50 down to $30. Let's see how it stacks up to its competition and if it's worth it even if it's new more budget friendly price. Unlike its competitors, it is widely available not only from online retailers like Amazon but from brick and mortar stores like Best Buy. I purchased mine from Amazon and it unfortunately had some superficial damage on the box, though this is not typical. This model has a modest working area of 6 inches by 3 and 3 quarters inches, works on Windows, Mac, and some Android devices with limited compatibility, but no iOS, unfortunately. While talking about how I feel about this tablet, I'm going to have a drawing going on in the background done using this. Begin, let's look at some positives. Aesthetically, it's very nice looking with some good industrial design. Not distracting, but attractive. The edges are slightly curved for comfort and use. So when your hand is sliding across the tablet, it's not going to be unpleasant to feel your wrist rub against it or um, it's not going to catch immediately on your sleeve, that sort of thing. The Wacom software and settings are highly tweakable, so say for example you want to change what the pressure curve is like or uh, what the buttons on the pen does, which it has to, it has a, in addition to the pen tip, it does not have an eraser. But it does have a two button setup. One can be set up for right click, for example, and the other can be set up for alt for color picking. That's at least how I set up mine, anyway. It was fairly easy to change the aspect ratios, so I use a pretty wide monitor to do all of my drawings, so it's a little weird to do on some tablets where it's just not going to fit properly just by default, so we have to set it to a limited area. And I just keep the drawing program in that area. And that can be somewhat challenging to accomplish on some other tablets where the software is not less capable, but less user-friendly. The cable is detachable and replaceable, and it's a common USB type B, uh, micro B rather, and that'll help it have more longevity compared to some cheaper tablets, but that's becoming more common with competitor brands. The Wacom brand itself is its own positive. You know it's made by a reputable company, it's extremely unlikely to have issues with software or hardware support, um, I believe they still supported their oldest tablets until very recently, if, and they still do provide the software for them, it's just not quite up to date. And you can feel safe installing whatever drivers they provide you. They're not going to install some random spyware to track your key logins and all kinds of other things because there's some company that used a generic manufactured tablet to sell you and then sneak in the software on the side. Now, there is one thing I wanted to talk about regarding levels of pressure sensitivity. This is a key marketing point made by basically every drawing tablet manufacturer, and I have a bit of an issue with it. After about 2048 levels, which is where this tablet finds itself, it becomes extremely difficult to find the difference between that and the highest degrees of sensitivity. The most it does is add more latitude in adjusting the pen's feel of softness or hardness when adjusting the pressure curves, but that's a fairly minor effect. In the real world, colors are created using values between 0 and 255, and in most formats it's fairly unusual to use a brush that is larger than 1000 pixels across, meaning you'll almost never take advantage of the raw sensitivity in the real world. Some people will disagree with me on this, and that is fine, but in my own experience, once you are beyond a, a degree of granularity, the diminishing returns ramp up fast and shouldn't be factored in, especially for a tablet marketed at the entry level. Now for the negatives. It is uncomfortable. For me. This drawing area feels a little too cramped, and the pen is not ergonomic at all. This is probably the worst Wacom pen I have ever used, and it might be okay for a child's hand, but it's definitely not suited for an adult, e even me with my tiny little baby hands. Um, secondarily, its pressure sensitivity by default is extremely stiff and requires a significant amount of pressure to show the full range it's capable of. I had to pretty much push down on the tablet fairly hard to feel like it was registering properly. I'm sure this could be adjusted in the settings to be a little less intense, but then you'd be giving up the range it does have, which is pretty limited. And other tablets in the price range just aren't really having that issue these days. For the price, I would expect USB-C. It's $30. It, I'm pretty sure they could have fit that in, especially when some of their competitors are. 
And the cable is extremely short. Like, let me show you real fast. This is all you get. It's about four feet long, roughly. You can maybe get this to a laptop sitting right next to you, but if your desktop is on the floor, you'd be having a hard time actually... <laughs> you be having a hard time actually making use of this. And that brings me to the materials. They're pretty cheap feeling and the pen nib is somewhat noisy when drawing. But that went away over time as the pen nib ground down, though I am concerned about how long the nibs will last considering how fast they are wearing. Let me show you real fast. This is the sound it's making. pretty grating, and just doing my one demo drawing, it was already worn down this much. It might be hard to see, but it already has a chisel tip, and that's not from a whole ton of drawing. I'd be really concerned about how long this will last over time. Next is the included software. It, it does have some stuff, but they're not permanent. At least, at least not the ones that I would want to have permanent. The Clip Studio Paint License is a three month license so if you already have it then it's kind of useless and if you don't have it then it's only good for that limited time. It also lacks any shortcut buttons on the actual tablet so typically on these you'd have shortcut buttons along the side and this tablet does not have that at all. It's really a disappointment comparing it to its competitors who do pretty much universally have those shortcuts at this point. I, I feel like Wacom could have afforded to add those on its lowest end tablet, but I can see how they're trying to make this to a cost, but I do wonder if that cost is a maybe a little too aggressive in, in terms of profit margin. And that leads me to the conclusion. If I had to describe this tablet, it would be underwhelming. Compared to other tablets at the same price or cheaper, it doesn't really make up for the premium the Wacom brand demands. When they were the only game in town, it was a no-brainer to use their products because the alternatives just did not compare in terms of quality or accuracy. But in this new decade where we have Huion, XP Pen, among other manufacturers, all providing compelling high-quality alternatives, it is difficult to give Wacom the nod outside of the highest of high-end pen displays, where they still make some effort to innovate. Who's this tablet for someone who wants to play it exceptionally safe. There is almost no risk in using it and you're getting exactly what they advertise and nothing more. But if you're willing to consider an alternative with less name brand star power, you might want to look elsewhere. Anyway, thank you for watching my review of this most okay of tablets. If you found it helpful or perhaps want to hear about more tablets or more art supply reviews or tutorials or whatever, drop me a like and subscribe. I'll see you again later. Bye.